master, the king, the head of the state, needed the consent of the U.S. In many other issues, the Iranian king called the American and the British embassy, invited him to his own palace in order to kind of try to make decisions together. If they were opposed to it, he would not make a decision. This was this political independence at that time. He was obedient to the U.S. Before the U.S., he was obeying the British orders. Reza Khan was appointed, actually was came to power by, with the help of the British, and when they saw that he's no more of use, they themselves ousted him, and they had his son back onto the throne. This was the situation before the revolution. Now, when the revolution took place, there was this full political independence. That means today in this world among all these great powers, there is one there is not one single power that you can see they can claim that their wish and their will has any impact on the will and decision of the Iranian people. Endures in their remarks. This independence, steadfastness, and political dignity, this has the highest attraction for world people. That's why you see world peoples, they have this respect for the Iranian nation. It's mainly related to this part, this political independence. Before the revolution, the government was imperial, it was a kingdom. On, on the contrast, you see, democracy. In a kingdom, people have no role. In a democracy, people have the, all the affairs in their hands. Before the revolution, it was hereditary, one person died and then another person was replaced him. People had no role in this transition of power. They had to accept it whether they liked it or not. But in the Islamic Republic, thanks to the Islamic Revolution, it's selective. People elect. People pick. It's people's taste, people's demand that decides. Before the Islamic Revolution, the government was a, a, a dictatorship. I remember one of our friends in Pakistan came to me secretly uh, to Mashhad, and he was talking to me. He said that this uh, a certain statement from uh, they were reading it in a park with their friends, and uh, he asked them why in a park you're reading a, a statement or communicate inside a park. Why is that? Uh, we could never imagine for one person to have one of these communiques or flyers uh, in his pocket with some criticism of the establishment of the of the then government and be able to walk freely. This was the situation, the security situation at that time. The revolution, the Islamic revolution, brought about this uh, era of criticism, of correction, of giving warnings and advice, and even opposition. This is what the Islamic Republic brought for the people. In the past 32 years, it has been so, even in the, f in the early years of the Islamic revolution. Before the revolution, Reliance on science and technology was totally, it was totally relied on the West. I have said time and again that a number of our military plane parts that were out of order or out of use, they needed repair or replacement. They never allowed Iranian engineers of the Air Force to, to actually 
uninstall those parts and see what's wrong with that. They could never, al they never allowed them to touch those parts. They put them in a plane and they took it to America and they brought one more and replaced it or they repaired it themselves. The industry that existed was only assembly at assembly level. There was no initiative, no innovation. The following the Islamic revolution, that this self-confidence, this national self-reliance appeared, the presence of a large number of prominent great scientists in various fields. We have scientists inside the country that internationally, you can see the like of them, you can see a very few the like of those scientists. They have progressed well, our youths, they're mostly young people. Before the revolution, Iran, when it came to international issues, even in regional issues, Iran played no role. It was a humiliated country. It could not leave any impact on any affairs. After the Islamic Revolution, this dignity and magnanimity of this nation and their impact and influence in regional countries' affairs, it dazzled the enemies. They have confessed to this. You can see today in the websites where you see foreign news, they are constantly talking about Iran's influence and Iran's presence in regional issues. This is being mentioned even with various they have their own incentives, which might be wrong, but they confess to this. Before the revolution, culturally speaking, were only copycats, but after the Islamic revolution, this cultural encroachment was considered as a threat. And there are so many other issues like this. These are fundamental issues. When a, in a country these pillars, these foundations are set, then this country can can be hopeful to, to actually base a new, a novel civilization on these foundations. Now, each one of these features or characteristics, in a way, attracted the attention of other world nations. They look at you, they get attracted to you, they admire you. And uh, most important of all is the issue of political independence and resistance against bullying of the enemies. Now allow me to mention, to, to make quotation from a Western official. Well, uh, I'm not going to actually, I'm supposed to uh, quote them, but this is, this is really interesting to pay attention. He says, there are two things that if you, uh, if this spreads among Muslims, then Muslim countries in various parts of the world, if they are aware of these two, then all of those Western taboos will be disrupted and will prove useless. So what are those two? This Western thinker says one of them is the constitution of the Islamic Republic. This basic law is a progressive and democratic government of the contemporary world and also religious faith. This makes it possible for, for world Muslims to see that this is possible, that it's possible to have a government that is both progressive and up-to-date and advanced at the same time, it is totally faith-based. This is the this is what the Constitution uh, makes it possible and proves it. This is one thing. And the, the second point is the record of the political, military, and scientific achievements list of the Islamic Republic. If Muslims see this, they will see that that has been made possible.